It has been a long while since we've taken a look at one of these lower priced HD clone systems. And today that is changing, my friends. We're gonna be taking a look at the Hyperkin Retron 2 HD, the retro gaming console for the NES and Super Nintendo that uses HDMI. So I've looked at all of Hyperkin's HD clone systems. They're Retron HD, they're Super Retron HD, they're Mega Retron HD, and they're Retron 77. And today we're going back to our roots looking at a lower price clone system. So I understand there is still a market for these kind of devices. Not everybody wants to fork out the kind of money that it costs for an FPGA based solution like analog super NT or retro USBs AVS for the NES. And you know, a lot of people are fine with these and this does have some cool features, some really nice controllers. So I was really excited to take a look, going back to our roots of looking at clone consoles. And like I said, I've already looked at pretty much all of their offerings in the past. So why not continue and take a look at this one today? So before we unbox this, go over some of the features, I'm gonna explain what it is we're gonna be testing today. So we will be testing some original cartridges. And also on the NES, I don't have any repro carts, uh, but I do have this homebrew right here, really awesome game. So we're gonna see if that stuff works on the NES front. Then we also have an original Famicom game, and then a bootleg Famicom game. We're gonna be playing those, or trying to play them, see if they work uh, by using the Hyperkin little uh, 60 to 72 pin adapter. So we're gonna test that out and see if that works. Um, and also, we will be taking a look at some EverDrives as well. Uh, so we do have a Famicom EverDrive and an NES EverDrive. So we're gonna test those out, see if they work. Uh, and then on the Super Nintendo front, we're gonna test out an original game, see if it works, test out a repro game, see if that works, and also test out a flash cart, see if that works. All the important stuff in my opinion, right? And I'm gonna take it one step further. I have no clue if this is gonna work. It probably won't, but we're gonna test it anyway. Doesn't even freaking matter. We gots to know. So this, this little fella right here, it's not gonna fit. So we're gonna have to use the uh, adapter here, but we have our Famicom disc system RAM adapter and then boom, we also have the Famicom disc system right here. So I said, you know what, screw it. Let's see if it works. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. So we'll test out a game or two. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, I'm not gonna cry too much about it, but you know what? In my opinion, it's worth trying out. So we're gonna go ahead and do it. So let's go ahead, move these cartridges to the side. Don't wanna drop nothing and get into this beast right here. So two in one, 720p HD audio and video. Uh, you do have 16.9 four by three. Aspect ratio switch, hells yes, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. We got some switch action. A premium controller, NTSC PAL switch, good thing. Six foot micro cable, what? So we do get both the uh, Cadet and the Scout controller, uh, the Scout and the Cadet. Uh, and I've spoken very highly of Hyperkin's controllers in the past for the NES and Super Nintendo. I think these are really comfortable, great controllers. I already know that. I don't know if the system's gonna be any good, but I do know before even touching this thing, the controller's gonna be good because I've already used them. So let's let's just look at the back of the box. You know, we do have that that foiling. I always like the foiling. You guys who followed my channel know that. Uh, we had the little, the little uh, corner there with the Hyperkin logo, pretty nice stuff. The box looks pretty neat. So let's go ahead and open this up. I mean, have tons of old school fun on your HD TV. We don't really need to read all that. We know what's going on. We wants to have some fun and test out some games. So here we go. Let's get this thing open. Oh, and there she is. Ain't she pretty? Boom. This one, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tear this one down uh, unless a bunch of people want me to tear it down. I'll do a quick video opening this up in another video, uh, but it doesn't feel like it's weighted. It does feel kind of heavy, but I don't know. I'm, I'm getting the, the thought that maybe it's not weighted. If you, if you want me to open this up, let me know in the comments down below. We'll do a tear down of this thing, uh, but let's take a look at that. Nice. So middle switch is off, down is Super Nintendo, up is NES, and we have a 
reset button there. I always like the plastics that they used. Always seems very uh, sturdy. And we do have an LED of the Hyperkin logo right there. A uh, very similar design to you know their previous consoles. Uh, we do have AV, HDMI right there. Our What is that? 4.3, 16.9 aspect ratio switch. And then our micro uh, USB for power. And then underneath this little fella, we have a couple more switches. That's why I was kind of like looking at it at an angle. I'm like, what's going on down there? Super Nintendo Power NTSC and then NES Power NTSC. So pretty nice stuff. So I'm sure the screws are underneath these feet right here. Let me know. We'll tear this thing down. Uh, two Super Nintendo controller ports, two NES controller ports. So pretty good stuff. Let's see real quick uh, how these things feel going in. Uh, inserting a, a cartridge, uh, Super Nintendo. They always have that pin perfect technology. Uh, you know what? That that doesn't feel bad. Goes in and out with ease. It's not a death grip, but it is holding it up. So that's nice. But it easily comes out. Actually, I think that's uh, these pins that they're using definitely feel better than uh, some of their previous versions. So I, I give them that. Like they, some of them were a little tight in the past. Nothing crazy, but this feels really, really good. I'm getting like excited in and out action on this thing. Uh, that that does feel good. Can't complain. Can't complain. Uh, let's take a let's take an NES game. Let's see how that feels. A little stiffer. Just a a, a little bit. It's got a little bit more of a grip. Doesn't come out. That's good. I know it's probably kind of hard looking to show the pins, but uh, a little, a little more grippy. But you know what? This is a homebrew cart, so maybe that's part of it. Sometimes they do use thicker boards. Yeah, it does feel a little more grippy than the Super Nintendo slot, but not not death grip territory. So no complaints there. Let's see what else we got up in here. So we have an instruction manual. Uh, yeah, we don't care about that. We, we don't care about manuals. That means nothing to me. We ain't worried about it. Let's, let's get into this. Oh, here's the controllers. Here's the NES controller. Really nice stuff. A very long cord. I believe these are like 10 foot cords. We'll find out. Hold on. There's a Super Nintendo one. I, I love both of these controllers. Um, I've used them already in the past. Like the These are different colored versions, um, but the ones I've used in the past, amazing controllers. I was stuck on using those for the longest time. See what we got in here. Just our cable box. Always like how they package these things. Get out of there. So there, oh nice. It did come with a, a brick. So there we go. There's the micro USB cable for power. Boom, HDMI cable, three foot HDMI cable. I never use those, I always use my own. And then nice, we do have a AV cable. So, I mean, I don't know who the hell will use this, but it's there just in case. Uh, maybe we'll do another video using this with the retro tank. I, I don't know, I'll figure it out when we get there, but let's go ahead, plug this thing in. Actually, let me check the controller ports. A little. A little, oh, oh, a little tough, a little tough. Not crazy. It feels like uh, just, mm, just got to get, it's got to get used to it. It's just got to get used to that insertion. Maybe it'll loosen up a little bit, but it is, uh, yeah, that the Super Nintendo port is a little stiff, which is better. It's, it's a little tight. It's better than being loose. I've had consoles before where the controller port, the controller just falls out with the slightest movement. So this is a little uh a little grippy on the controller ports, but it doesn't feel like doesn't feel like the controller ports going anywhere. So I'm not complaining on that. NES not not as uh not as uh, uh get in there. Not as not as crazy grippy as the uh Super Nintendo side. So op opposite of the uh uh opposite of the uh cartridge slots 
Boom. Let's go ahead and plug this biatch in. Take a look at some footage. Let's do it. Okay, guys. So first up, we have an original Super Nintendo cart, and I'm going to let the intro play Super Mario RPG. So take a look. Take a listen. Let's see what's up. Okay, let's go ahead and pop in a repro cart. I'm just gonna play through a little bit of this stuff, comment on what I'm seeing and hearing in a moment. So let's take a look at a repro. Oh yeah, I remember this one from Retro Circuits where they put the intro with uh, my daughter and son, but hey, pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get this started. Demon's Crest, Hagane, that's a good one. Let's do it. Okay, we're just blasting through these, but let's go ahead and put in our SD2 SNES. Let's do it. So there we go. Boots up just fine. That's great. Hopefully, hopefully the games work, which if it boots up, they're going to work. This is the SD2 SNES Pro version, the newest version. Uh, so there we go. I do have an on 4.3 aspect ratio. I don't play on 16.9, but hey, if you do, that's your own damn business. You want to stretch out the image, take up the whole screen, more power to you, bro but we got it at 4.3, just so people know, so people understand. Let's, let's jump into something. Just real quick. Oh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Let's see what this looks like real quick. I think this is one of the games I tested on the, uh, the Super Retron way back. It's been a long time since I've tested these, but I just want to blast through as many games uh, real quick, just to kind of get some visuals up on the screen. Give you guys a good idea, that kind of thing. But nice, the flash cart is working. So let's listen, take a look. Big Apple, 3 a.m. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers Super Nintendo for now. Um, we're going to jump into NES, the Famicom stuff, see what works with that. But with Super Nintendo, original carts, repo, re, repo, repo them carts, repro carts, and flash carts seem to be playing just fine. No real issues there. Um, the color's blown out. This is pretty much exactly the same as the Super Retron. Uh, so if the Super Retron wasn't to your liking, then this definitely won't as well um pretty much the same system the colors the contrast is off the sound is okay i mean it's not perfect uh but it's doable so that's where this is at you know no right or wrong decisions if this suits your needs then foot it there you go this device is 75 bucks two systems two solid controllers but yeah i'm not a huge fan of Super Nintendo on this. I am spoiled with other options, but not everybody has those options or even cares, not even about affording them. Some people don't want to spend that kind of money on like the, the Super NT, that kind of thing, or, you know, a Mr. FPGA. So Super Nintendo, it's okay. Uh, you know, the details, I still see the details in the games, just the contrast is, is off. It's, it's kind of a bit brighter as well. So um, there's that. Let's switch on over to NES. Okay, first we're gonna we're gonna try the homebrew cart beer slinger. Really love this game, and there we go. It actually booted up, so that is a good thing. Ah, this this was a good game. I think I streamed this a long while back. Beat it. Really cool. I know this game's out of print, kind of sought after by some people. I really dug it. I thought this was a really neat game. 
kind of reminiscent to, um, oh good, I, gra I grabbed the right one. But hey, I just wanted to showcase this. It, it does work. Oh, there you go. There's your IPA, fool. So let's go ahead and switch on over uh, to the EverDrive. So I already have the Famicom EverDrive plugged into the adapter. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Okay, cool. So with the adapter, the Famicom version of the EverDrive does work. I will still pop in these other two NES games in a moment, Super Mario Brothers and Manhattan Project. Super Mario Brothers is the big one. I mean, I have an original copy, but I didn't want to bust it out. So we'll, we'll try this version. Uh, you know, you get a really good idea because that's a game, if you had an NES, you're extremely familiar with Super Mario Brothers. So we'll get an idea on the colors, the sound, all that good stuff. But real quick, let's make sure game boots up. Oh yeah, it's the B button with the Famicom. Uh, just anything. As long as it boots up, we're fine. EverDrive's work, but we'll still pop in the uh, NES version too. So cool, it works. That's a good thing. Always something a lot of people would always ask me about uh, back when I first started reviewing these consoles. Do EverDrive's work, do flashcards work? And it took me a while before I started getting flashcards and embracing them, but you know what? I'm glad I did. I'm glad those people bug the shit out of me to get flashcards because I've really been enjoying them. I have flashcards for pretty much every system now, and it's nice to be able to test that stuff out. But yeah, the EverDrive worked. Packland. We're going to go ahead and throw in Packland, see if that works. The flashcard works. The rest of these games should work. There we go. Packland! It's working. Oh my god. This game is so much better. Uh... Oh yeah, you gotta press up to jump. You can change the controls, I think, uh, because you gotta hold the A button to move forward, uh, the B button to go back, and then up to jump. But you can change that. Definitely the colors are not looking um, to what I recall. I've played the crap out of this game uh, on the NES and, and the Turbo Graphics. Turbo Graphics version is a hell of a lot better, uh, to be honest. But there we go. Go ahead and pop that out. We'll go ahead and throw on the uh, bootleg Super Mario Brothers Lost Levels, see if that works. Bootleg Mario Bros Lost Levels, there we go. I don't remember why I bought this, I think it was before I had a Famicom disc system, but there we go. We'll comment on, on what everything looks and sounds like in a moment, but it, it works. Let's switch to something else. Let's switch to uh, the EverDrive. Okay, it works, it works. That's a good thing. Uh, G.I. Joe, Galaga, let's just jump into Galaga. Uh, we're going to test Super Mario Brothers in a second. That's that's the main thing. Oh, the Famicom Disk System. We got to we got to mess with that. Okay. Stage 1. There we go. There we go. Well, the, the controllers, uh, just to comment on the controllers, I love these controllers. Definitely nothing wrong with them. Plenty of length if you like wired controllers. They feel great. The quality's great. D-pad feels good. The buttons feel good. Cannot complain about these controllers. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, pop in Super Mario Brothers. Give you guys an idea on that. So there was Super Mario Brothers. We got a lot to talk about in a second, but uh, what else do we got left? Let's, whoa, let's pop in uh, Manhattan Project. Here we go. So far, um, I, I do have some stuff to say about colors, sound, all that. Um, but the, the visuals are definitely pretty crisp with these systems. Uh, it's essentially just composite going up to, uh, you know, HD, just a composite upscaler type thing. Uh, for these games, 8 and 16-bit, uh, it's not doing a bad job. Uh, it's just I kind of wish the video encoders were a little more dialed in, whatever it is that's dictating the colors, the palettes, and stuff like that. Uh, Super Nintendo, the sound wasn't too bad. The colors definitely were off. NES, uh, the colors are definitely not correct. Um, and the sound, Super Mario Brothers, definitely you could hear the sound was really not what we're accustomed to. But like I said, that doesn't bother you. 
there you go. I just wanted to give you guys some options, showcase this thing in action, because uh, I know a lot of people would be interested, and I think this one was kind of flying under the ra radar for a moment there. Um, but there we go, kind of nice Nintendo, Super Nintendo HD all-in-one with a bunch of options. But the last thing I want to test, Famicom Disk System. So let's go ahead and pop that adapter back in uh, and get our RAM adapter in. Okay, my friends, Famicom Disk Systems, just, it's not happening. I mean, there's nothing to it. I've used uh, both the actual Famicom Disk System powered up, plugged in, that kind of thing. I've used it with the uh, FDS stick, which I never have an issue with. I just always get the uh, error tube battery. It's It just does not work. It's unfortunate. I wish these clone systems would work with the Famicom Disk System, um, but any kind of arrangement I have with it does not work on this clone system. I don't think I've ever gotten it to work on a non-FPGA based clone system before. So, hey, it was worth a shot, but it didn't work for me. So final thoughts, uh, the system's definitely, you know, physically, it's, it's a quality piece of, you know, device. It's a nice little box. The plastics they use, the quality behind it being put together is nice. The controllers are really nice. The pins are really nice. It's just the colors and the sound. NES is definitely um, way off from what I'm accustomed to. Super Mario is just, the sounds are not very good. The colors are quite a bit off, the palette's off. Super Nintendo, uh, the, the, the saturation, the, uh, the contrast, that kind of thing is definitely not right. Some people don't give a crap about this stuff. Some people do. I just wanted to showcase this. You know, my my thoughts don't mean anything. Uh, I can't recommend or not recommend this system other than for myself. I have other more better options, but they're also more costly options. Super Nintendo that's, RG, you know, with RGB, uh, that kind of thing going through an OSSC. We're looking at hundreds of dollars or a Super NT, which is also a couple hundred dollars, an RGB modded NES or even uh, an H. Well, like breaking stuff, an HDMI modded uh, AV Famicom. You know, these are pricey options that are great, way better than these clone systems. But not everybody is going to want to spend that kind of money, um, be it that you either just can't justify the cost, even if you do have the money. Some people are just like, I'm not spending that. I could use this for something else. Or it's just not in your budget. So that's why I like showcasing different options. This might be for you, but I just hope to give you enough information visually and you know audio wise to make it you know a good decision on your own there uh, the device is 75 bucks link will be in the description boom there you go really appreciate you guys hanging out with me it is hot as a mofo up in here holy crap but with that said guys i will catch y'all next time peace out bye bye and boom a big fat ass thumbs up bye boom and bye bye